think there are a lot more many people at home right now watching us. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? You're watching the Lydia's Breakfast Show in this here town. My name is Valentine or at Kalamival. If you have been grounded by this type of I don't know, it's virus. And if they've told you to go home or stay home, I'm going home. It's okay. But please wash your hands, okay? Wash your hands. Uh, keep, what else are we supposed to do? Wait, wait. If you cough, do it over here at the elbow. Salimiana, Ivi, Ama Zahewa, Tu, Ama Mombe, Ivona, stay. Basic things. And if symptoms persist, Tamuhimoni, seek medical advice. At y on Facebook, at y channel on Twitter. Today is men. <clears throat> Not really Mental Health Monday, but it has a ring to it. Today is Health Monday, but it's going to be Mental Health Monday because that's what we're going to focus on. So please come and join me in introducing our guest. Hello. Hi. You guys look fantastic. Thank but you. I'm sure you've already had that today, haven't oh, yeah. you? <laughs> Maybe you can start with yourself. What is your good so, name? Thank you for having me. My name is Frederick Beucci. Mm -hmm. um, Frederick Beucci, I have so many other titles on my name, mm -hmm. but today I'm here as a uh, mental health awareness activist. Mm -hmm. I'm so much into epilepsy, mm -hmm. which also, uh, you know, it's one of the cases that we are addressing. Mm -hmm. But my mandate today is to just show how best we can create awareness around mental health mm -hmm. and all other cases that are aligned to you know mm -hmm. these other conditions that people talk about mm -hmm. yeah we used to think it was a white people problem a long time ago so yes yes that yes we're trying to stop that thinking yeah we are <laughs> okay, it's gonna be exciting mm -hmm. yeah and you are hi i am mary bita mm -hmm. uh, i'm a researcher at the Kemri welcome trust research program in kilifi as well as a student research at oxford university in the uk um, uh, my research area is around mental health interventions trying to understand how we can get more people to seek care for mental health and how we can empower the health systems to be able to support these people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and also a long time ago, we used to think people with certain conditions are pretending. Yes. Or, or, or they're just really slow mm -hmm. or, or there's just, you know, it's just something that, that they're doing that's wrong, not really that there's a condition or there's a situation going on. Yes. So, wow. First of all, I'm so floored by your whole life. Oh my gosh. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be like you. Yeah, for real. Okay. <laughs> Hashtag is white money. So maybe let's start with what you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I do is um, I try to come up with creative uh, ways of, you know, raising awareness around all areas of mental health conditions. Mm -hmm. um, one thing we have realized is there is a gap in people being able to understand. Mm -hmm. And that gap has been created by lack of information. Mm -hmm. So people have different perceptions about what all these mental health conditions are. Mm -hmm. People have you know, different perceptions also of how to live with mental conditions. At what point does, do we ever say that this person has this condition mm -hmm. or that other condition? Where do, do we really draw the line? Mm -hmm. And what right information is supposed to be shared to people? Mm -hmm. um, and we used to think back then, mental illness cases were for the old people. Mm -hmm. But now, with the suicide rates rising among young people, mm -hmm. we are tracking back ourselves and trying now to understand what is it that young people are not aware of could there be other ways of improving mm -hmm. our level of getting information so that you know the whole mental health thing does not sound like Greek to people, mm -hmm. yet it is with us here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we employ different methods of creating awareness. And one of the things that we utilize again is the media. Mm -hmm. When we begin the conversations over here, mm -hmm. You probably get so many other people following it up even after mm -hmm. we've been able to create awareness. One particular thing I would like to mention again is sometime back I took up a challenge mm -hmm. of you know getting the conversation going and in 2018 I did a walk from Nairobi to Mombasa. Ati? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. From Nairobi to Mombasa. It's 
of course, I got the same reactions by the time I was hey. trying to tell people that I was going to do the work. But this was the point. Mm -hmm. When every other person was trying to get to understand why would a person walk 482 kilometers, mm -hmm. you know, from Nairobi to Mombasa, already it started the conversation. So every other person who wanted to hear why I was walking, I was already telling them, you mm -hmm. know what, there is a gap in people getting information about mental health, mm -hmm. about epilepsy, and so many others. So if I have been able to capture your attention because I'm doing the work, mm -hmm. then this is the conversation I need us to begin, okay. you know, over and over to so Ooh. many other people. Right, before we get maybe to the link between the, um, the awareness of mental health and epilepsy, yeah. maybe you can tell me, is, is it new? Because I, I would like to assume, again I've been assuming all day, that the generation before us, I didn't really hear a lot of suicide cases, either because maybe technology wasn't as effective as it is now, or maybe there's just something they were doing that we're not doing, or te technology is the reason that we're committing suicide now. Is <laughs> what's going on? I think mental illness is as old as mankind. Mm -hmm. It has been here for the longest time possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, things like suicide have also been here for a very long time. Mm -hmm. For example, one culture that I'm aware of is the Kalenjin culture, where, mm -hmm. where they used to do what is called mass suicide, where old people would gather together and throw themselves off a cliff what? and yeah, into waterfalls because they felt that they were old and they were becoming a burden. Oh. And by that time, it was culturally appropriate, so they did not consider it, you know, okay. as a mental illness. And by the way, we say mm -hmm. die by suicide and not commit suicide because when we when we say commit suicide, it's mm -hmm. like we are glorifying the act of, you know, a person taking their own life, yeah. which often is a consequence of distress mm -hmm. or despair. Mm -hmm or giving up hope in life. So we say die by suicide and not commit suicide. So mental illness has existed for a very long time. But what is happening now is that the conversations are wider mm -hmm. because now there's technology. Mm -hmm. We can talk to people from all over the world and we can hear more stories. But these conditions have always existed. And also now people are more willing to share their stories and mm -hmm. to talk about them. And. Um, we are taking advantage of that. For example, the research that I'm focusing on now mm -hmm. is about um, raising awareness using um, very creative methods, including engaging both uh, biomedical practitioners who are healthcare providers in hospitals and what we call alternative health practitioners, what people call waganga or wachawi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, this is so going to be late. Uh, yeah, so how do they come together? <laughs> That's a good question. So um, the, the project that I'm working on currently is called Diffusimo, uh -huh. which means breaking free in Kigiriyama, which is where we are trying to get these two practitioners on the table to talk about mental health, to talk about how they are managing these patients and to talk about how they can work together to benefit the patient. Now I know you're imagining how does this even work because you know um, traditional practitioners have their own set of rules and regulations of diagnosis and management and healthcare providers as well. Um, what used to happen initially is that people used to try and decide who is right and who is wrong and that was not working mm -hmm. because um, it's not about challenging what the other person is doing but it's about what's at the center of all this is the patient. Mm -hmm. So what Diffusimo is doing is making the patient the center of the conversation and then asking these two groups what can they do to improve the outcomes of the patient. And we are using very creative methods to do this. We are using songs, we are using poems, we are wow. using dance, and we're even using documentaries and films to try and engage these two groups. So for example, we have a film which I hope people can get to check out in our website, www.defusimo.org. Uh, this film is about a man with schizophrenia, which is what people call wazim, which is the type of mental illness that people know about the most. Mm -hmm. The one where someone is disheveled, they are, they are unkempt, they are talking to themselves, they are seeing things that other people are not seeing. Mm -hmm. We are using this film in this documentary to try and initiate dialogue about um, what happens when someone goes through all these pathways of care. So Changawa, who's the man in this story, has seen traditional healers, mm -hmm. they've seen faith healers, which is the imams at hospital, um, and now they're seeking care at hospital. 
the mm -hmm. biomedical facility. So we are just using these documentaries to try and engage people to see what happens when a person has mental illness and they go through all these pathways of care and how can all these providers come together and talk about how they can help patients with mental illness. And I can say it has been successful mm -hmm. to some extent because what we are seeing now, for instance, a practice that's happening in Kilifi is that um, the clinicians there mm -hmm. are actually seeing patients and encouraging them in subsequent visits to come with their imam or with their pastor or whoever wow. they are seeing at home so that <gasps> this dialogue can happen. So I think um, that is one way that we are trying to address this stigma that has been there about what are the causes of these disorders? Who should I see if I have these disorders? You are the future. <laughs> the future. And you know, it, it floors me to imagine that you could be so educated and, and still, you know, consider African traditional practices. Because at first I read in an accent and they don't want anything to do African things. So it's 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 wow, it's wonderful that there was, a, there was a guest who came also on Health Monday and he said he was conducting research as well. So yeah. he wanted, or the organization was aimed at helping people in different counties. So they would go with help to the county with their own kind of program and, you know, kind of enforce what they were told to do. And then they came to realize, okay, you must adapt accordingly. You can't just give them because they have their own yeah. ways of solving things. They have mm -hmm. their own cultures and beliefs and all this. So the amalgamation is fantastic. God. I knew I wanted to be like, I told you, I told you. Now, sir, there was a time where I had an interview again with someone who lives with epilepsy. And she told me a couple of things that I, I found very difficult, like basic things she couldn't do alone, like maybe drive a car, because you never know when the episode will be there yeah. and she needs someone. And Again, now you couple it with something like depression, you know, mental illness. That, yeah, yeah. That's just, you know, let's make him a guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's not supposed to talk about his feelings. Mm -hmm. He's living with epilepsy. And now what? How do we help him? Yeah, so it's true. You know, the reason why we are also trying to look at um, epilepsy and mental health, when you talk of depression, anxiety, this condition also elicits some of that. I mean, once it has been mentioned or diagnosed that somebody has uh, epilepsy, you know, anxiety already strikes in. Mm -hmm. And over time, somebody becomes so depressed because of the same idea that they feel they're already locked out from doing some of the things mm -hmm. that they're supposed to do, say driving, when they think about marriage already, that's a closed door for them. Aww. When they think about, you know, getting employment um, for whatever careers that they study, mm -hmm. they have a feel that, you know, we are in the same position, we can do these things. But by the time I mention that I have this kind of condition, then I might not be able to get that opportunity. And it's worse, again, for children because the parents also feel why let them go to school when every other time they have an attack i have to be called it's chaos in school so let me just lock them inside and not give them that opportunity that other people do have mm -hmm. so how are we helping them one is by you know getting everybody to know what all these conditions are mm -hmm. and getting everybody to know the the strength that is in each and every person who has different conditions mm -hmm. aside from one having a condition we have to we have to be in the knowledge that they are human beings yeah so and that's why even in epilepsy we we, we shun away from uh, addressing them as epileptics mm -hmm because now it's like you are taking that condition and you are stamping so yeah so this person doesn't even have a name yeah. again mm -hmm. yeah and and i draw that from an experience i've had because i'm taking care of a sister who has epilepsy mm -hmm. and at some point her name was fading away if anyone wanted to refer to 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 her uh, you know and getting it right should say ile familia ikona 
Oh. When she has a name, her name is Mercy. So mm -hmm. you try to struggle with that. But you won't blame these people so much. It's because from their understanding is when you end up having a certain condition, then it becomes your identity. Mm -hmm. And then if it becomes your identity, that's what they try to define you with. Mm -hmm. When they begin to define you with that, even the basic rights that you're supposed to enjoy as a human being, mm -hmm. you begin struggling again to, you know, earn them when they're supposed to be rights that need to, like, uh, be cut across every mm -hmm. other person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and that's why awareness is very important at this point in time because what we are trying to say is with all these other creative measures, as Mary has mentioned, mm -hmm. we are trying to forward the idea that these people have their rights. Mm -hmm. These people can lead normal lives. Those that have been diagnosed and they can be put under medication, I mean, they can just be, live and be okay. Mm -hmm. Right now, my sister has been seizure free for almost four years now. You know, she's back to school. Oh. And it's because we've just adhered to you know, medication mm -hmm. and what the doctor is advising and, and, and all these people have the right to get proper care mm -hmm. from the hospitals or the places that we refer them to go for, for help mm -hmm. so that they can lead normal lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. It must be a task. Already you're taking medication, yeah. you're trying to live a normal life, and then again, someone does not think you're normal. Yeah, no. <laughs> it must be a lot. Yeah. Okay, so maybe if I, if I could ask, you mentioned schizophrenia. It's, yeah. it's something that we watch in movies a lot. Sana Sana is in a series. But is, is there like, I, I don't know, let me frame this right. What's, what's a silent killer in mental illness? Is it... Is it depression? Is it, uh, what is it really that is taking away people from us and we don't really know or we don't, there are no obvious symptoms. You won't start removing your clothes in this year town and teaching uh, yeah. for no reason, but yeah. it's taking away your soul, it's taking away your, you know, your mental health, your, that glow you're supposed to have, i say, every day. Is there like one or two? I mean, there is no specific condition that I would say is a silent killer mm -hmm. because what is most debilitating about all types of mental illness is the disability that it inflicts upon the person with the disorder. Mm -hmm. I would say depression is the commonest because, you know, um, Kenya is currently ranked sixth in Africa for, com for mental wow. disorders. There are about six million people in the country suffering from one mental neurological disorder or another. Mm -hmm and depression alone accounts for 1.9 million out of these 6 wow. million. So it's, it's sort of the commonest. But um, I think what's the silent killer is the stigma, actually. Like mm -hmm. you mentioned, you know, manume na faji kaze. Akuna kulia. Akuna kulia. Obvio, obvio. You know, mm -hmm. una skia, for example, someone saying, don't tell anybody that there's someone with epilepsy in this family or someone mm -hmm. with schizophrenia in this family. It is the stigma that is actually the silent killer in all these disorders. Mm -hmm. Because um, I wouldn't say that there's one disorder that a person suffers more than the other. Mm -hmm. But I guess depression is more common because it is not easily identifiable, especially mild and moderate form. Someone would look very well dressed, someone would be here at work mm -hmm. laughing and smiling but slowly dying inside, like you're saying. So it is the disability, it is the stigma that is actually the big problem in um, people with mental illnesses, really. Mm -hmm. Yes. How would you advise us, maybe, for those who believe that they're not suffering because you could be suffering from mental illness and you don't know, mm -hmm. but how, how, would, how do we be compassionate without overstepping? How do we help without being overbearing? Um, I would just, um, I like giving like three things that I say would be telltale because the first step to helping would be to know or to recognize that a person is actually suffering. So the first one I always say is thoughts, the second one is actions and the third one is feelings. If you notice a change in any of these three things, if you're noticing that someone is just behaving slightly differently, for depression it would be being withdrawn. I'm losing interest in activities that were previously pleasure, pleasurable, changes in appetite, eating too much or not eating at all. Um, when you look at someone, they look really tired because they didn't sleep last night at all. Just if you notice changes in these things, in their actions, in their way of thinking, maybe they're really meticulous and now they, you know, they're missing their attention to the details, etc. 
if you notice these things, the first step is always just find out if they're okay. I always try, I always tell people, ask someone, are you okay? And ask it twice, mm -hmm. because the first time they're likely to say they're fine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, just find out about how the person is. And another important thing is to know what to do. What if um, I have a problem, what's the next step to do? There's always help. You can always refer the person um, to seek care. You know, you don't tell them that, like you're sick, you have a mental illness, just tell them it would be good if you speak to someone. Mm -hmm. And also taking care of yourself while you're taking care of the other person. Because, you know, what would happen if you're too empathetic is that you might end up having what we call vicarious trauma where, you know, a person is constantly telling you their problems and you're constantly taking it in mm -hmm. and you're not taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So you end up carrying all these What's burdens. Has it? <laughs> has it? I'm glad it has a name. <laughs> yes. So, you know, so making sure that you're taking care of yourself even as you take care of the other person and just watching out for the other person. Mm -hmm. Because with mental illness, there are always signs. It's just that we miss the signs because we are always absorbed in what's going on in our lives, etc. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just being observant, taking care of yourself and just finding out how the other person is as well. Just simple, simple things. Yeah. Just, how are you? How are you doing? In fact, just tell me at White Five on Facebook, at White Five channel, on Twitter, hashtag is Why in the Morning. Maybe in conclusion, if the viewer has just tuned in to Why in the Morning mm -hmm. and you want your words to make an impact and you want to, them to remember this, this important fact, what would it be? What is, what drives you? What wakes you up mm -hmm. in the morning? Yeah, so well, um, two things I would say is um, we, as human beings, um, we have different experiences in life. And sometimes we need to have a spirit of accommodating others that we feel they have been on the road with us, but they got to a point and they started either getting tired or wearing out and feeling like life is on the low for their side. Nobody really uh, chooses to have a kind of condition that they know will limit them to live their full life mm. yeah but we get to some point in life and we find ourselves in in those circles so one thing i would say is uh, those that have found themselves in such conditions number one is accept you know that that is what is happening at that moment in time because mm -hmm. most of us live in in denial of the reality of the things that have got ourselves to where we are. And every other day we try now to prove that it's, it's, not, it's not what we are experiencing now. We, we are trying to print a different picture out there. Mm -hmm. if, if you are taking photos, you, you, you are posting, and you, you just want to keep that positive vibe. And, and, and on, the other, on the flip side of it, you want to deny something that it's really the reality. Mm. So accept, acceptance is that it's the big, it's a big issue here. And for families now, uh, and I'll give my own example, what has really uh, proved out to be of help, even for the well-being of our sister, has been the support of every other family member that has been there. Wow. If, if you don't have uh, that extended family to really feel are going to be there for you, then you need to choose on a few friends that you can really um, um, rely on and mm. you can always share, you can always be open to. I don't know of other conditions, but epilepsy in itself, if one person has it, indirectly it affects other five people. Wow. Indirectly. Because mm -hmm. I remember at some point I had to quit my job so that I'm home to take care oh. of my sister. It was a tall order for my mom to just do that work by herself. Mm. And already from withdrawing from work, there is a ripple effect in you being able to contribute to the welfare of the family. Wow. Every other time we come home and she has a fresh injury because she got an attack, you know, there is food on the table but nobody feels like eating because you're looking at this particular case. So if you're not, you don't come together as a family and give out that support then it becomes a little bit difficult to keep up with the with helping any other condition aside from just being epilepsy so mm -hmm. acceptance and family support these two things in helping us curb mental uh, health and mental illnesses and just helping these people live a full life 
very important. Hmm. Yeah. You're humbling me. Just, <laughs> just you could just be sitting, then suddenly you fall in, now you've cut yourself. Yeah, no, yeah, it's a yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah oh yeah. gosh. Yeah. Wait, hashtag is why in the morning. Okay, I have two special questions for you as we finish up. Um, one, please again tell us about your amazing project and <laughs> and maybe your greatest accomplishment in regards to it. And then, usually we hold conversations, very, very informal conversations, sometimes about relationships. And I, I am coming to understand that so many people have been hurt by someone or the other. And I'm, I'm thinking maybe not, it's not because people are bad, it's just because they're hurting themselves. And hurt people will hurt other people, bleed on everyone else. So maybe, I don't know how we can just advise that, maybe lay some hands, some magical hands, some educated hands on it. Yes, please. Okay, I guess. Um, so the first point about Diffusimo. Mm -hmm. So Diffusimo is a collaboration between uh, Camry Welcome Trust, um, the Documentary Institute of Eastern Africa, and the Malindi District Cultural Association. Now these three groups came together to try and raise awareness about mental illness. This is a project that's funded by the Welcome Trust Public Engagement Fund. And uh, so what um, Cambridge uh, leads the research, the Documentary Institute leads the filming, archiving, documenting, and the Malindi District Cultural Association are the custodians of the culture and uh, in the context of Kilifi County. And what the project is doing is that we are trying to engage the different stakeholders to raise awareness about mental health. The stakeholders here are um, people with mental illness themselves, their mm -hmm. caregivers, members of the community that they live in, and like I mentioned, healthcare providers, both what we call mainstream healthcare providers, that's the doctors, the nurses, CTC, and the alternative healthcare providers. This includes traditional healers, faith healers, or in Kiswahili, they say Waombezi, mm -hmm. and this could be moms, could be pastors could be people not practicing any religion um, yeah so what we are trying to do is uh, what we call using participatory approaches so not talking at them but having dialogue with them mm -hmm. to try and understand the context of the disease in Kilifi County and to try and together come up with ways of addressing stigma the main aim of the campaign is to try and demystify the myths and misconceptions around mental illness for example that mental illness is caused by witchcraft that if a man um, speaks about mental illness, they are weak. Mm -hmm. um, myths that people with mental illness cannot lead normal and productive lives. We are trying to demystify those myths. And also we are trying to direct people to care and tell them that these conditions can be managed. You can live a normal life. And we try and give them the alternatives that are available by directing them to the different facilities, etc. Um, so that's it about Diffusimo, and I really hope people can check out our uh, social media pages. Go! Go <laughs> there! Go there! Diffusimo! Diffusimo.org. We are at Diffusimo on Twitter, Diffusimo Facebook, Diffusimo uh, YouTube. Just check out our channels and see what we do. Write to us, talk to us. We love having conversations online and offline. And um, your second question about, you know, the effect of mental health in relationships. Mm. And I believe you're talking about different forms of relationships. It could be, you know, uh, parent, child, yeah. husband, wife, boyfriend, mm -hmm. girlfriend, whatever. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, there are very many things that determine mental wellness. There are very many social determinants of mental wellness. And as you know, right now, um, there's a lot going on in this country. There's a lot of unemployment, there's a lot of stress and a lot of strain. And these things contribute to mental ill health. For example, social determinants are very key mm -hmm. to triggering things like depression. So, um, I mean, the advice that I can give is just, you know, being constantly aware that these things do exist mm -hmm. and that they can affect anyone. In fact, one in four people at some point in their life will suffer from a mental illness. Wow. And uh, a lot of the things that we are seeing right now could be manifestations of, you know, people suffering from these different disorders. So just constantly insisting on the message of being self-aware, being aware of your environment, and just doing what you can to uplift another person uh, when you realize, you know, that they're going through a struggle, being the listening ear, being the first point of contact for that person, and just letting, you know, the other person know that you can talk to me if you have a problem mm -hmm. and then using that opportunity to direct them to a professional who can assist them because these conditions are manageable and you can lead a normal productive life if you seek care in good time she's goals she's just goals she's life goals basically mm -hmm. 
and you're still watching We're in the Morning. So we have a question on our social media platforms at Sana Sana Ya Facebook, and we're asking do men know how to express themselves? Atikwa, mkatiano, when oppressed, when happy. Akinyanganywa dem na boss, leg, akilipa swalo, duni, and all that. Talk to Val. This is Val. All right, so as we continue, thank you, Kita, for that wonderful post. We have a Duncan on Degas' hashtag when the morning watching from Madai North area. Val na kwambia kuji express ni ngumu sana. Na kwambia, dili nyanganyo demu wangu na mse akona do, akona gari, so singe do kitu. Woy, ama kujitetea, because by then li kwa nalipot, oh, per day, lienda tu ivo walai. Ruben Tinder says in Nairobi, Madare, chon. Tuned. Yes, nothing is like that. Um, boss means nothing. Apana tambua boss atakama inia mekwa jiri. Rugut says in Aldama Ravine, why not express yourself? I like that. Mine and more says they don't. We leave everything to go. Sasa ona. Sasa ona nani. Okay, as we continue, remember to use the hashtag is why in the morning. Remember to wash your hands, guys. Wash your hands. Yes. Uh, so as we continue, remember to at White Five on Facebook, White Two Five Four channel on Twitter. I've had such an amazing conversation. If you missed it, please do like you and go to our YouTube channel where you will get a clip official of this here situation. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for you. braving Corona and coming to studio. <laughs> we really appreciate you. Thank you for having us. So you know how to find them in. In fact, just repeat, how can we find you? Yes, yeah, so um, on Facebook, Frederick Beucci. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have a page on Angaza Kifafa na Beucci. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's purely for epilepsy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you can also check National Epilepsy Coordination Committee. Mm -hmm. I'm currently the National Secretary for wow. National Epilepsy Board. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of information there about epilepsy and mental health. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also get my number mm -hmm. there as, as opposed number to saying it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you can find me on my personal pages, um, Twitter, Facebook, at Mary Bita, and also on my project pages at Difusimo, www.difusimo.org. Number one, I'm a limited Hey, you heard it here first. <laughs> don't go away at Hillary. The, the river is coming up with youth and politics, so don't want to miss it.